was in the Commission Corps of the U.S. Public Health Service, which is one of the seven uniform services. So we do have a rank system that's very similar, but it's exactly the same as the Navy and the Coast Guard. So uh, I was a captain, and uh, that was my rank. My title uh, was, in, was a senior environmental health scientist at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I s served for uh, over 35 years total. I uh, started my career in a local health department in Durham, North Carolina, and uh, I served for 20, I served eight and a half years there, and then I served 27 years on active duty with the U.S. Public Health Service. I started my career in 1980, as I mentioned, as an environmental health specialist in Durham County, uh, but when um, I uh, decided to change careers was in 1988, I was offered a commission with the United States Public Health Service. My first assignment was in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, I started there as a field environmental health specialist and was uh, later, just a few months later, promoted to the director of the environmental health program for the Tanana Chiefs Conference, which is a large Alaska Native corporation in Fairbanks that covers really the geographic center of the state, but I was also assigned as the service unit environmental health specialist for the North Slope Service Unit of Alaska. So I worked there for about four years and was selected for long-term training. So at that point in time, the U.S. Public Health Service allowed me to go back and get a master's degree, and I selected the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, the San Antonio campus. After leaving there, I was assigned uh, to the headquarters west office of the Indian Health Service in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and served there for a couple of years. In fact, I was in a shared assignment there. I worked at the headquarters west office, but I also shared duties with the Albuquerque area office. So I was providing services to the tribes of the Albuquerque area, but also doing work for the entire Indian Health Service through the headquarters west office. So I worked in that job for two years and the U.S. Coast Guard came calling and it was a chance for me to come back home to North Carolina. There was a position that was open in Elizabeth City at the U.S. Coast Guard Support Center there and I uh, accepted that assignment. I, for about six and a half years I ran the Coast Guard's largest environmental compliance program out of the U.S. Coast Guard Support Center. At the end of my assignment there I uh, was looking for uh, an opportunity to go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia, and an opportunity did arise and I accepted a position there as a senior environmental health scientist. And I relocated to Atlanta, Georgia in 2000 and uh, stayed there until I retired in September of 2015. So I had a nice 14 year assignment at CDC where I finished my career. The most memorable moment was probably, well, I would separate that into two things. I would say first the most memorable moment was probably when I was very, I was very honored to win the 2013 Walter S. Mangold Award. And that was, that's the highest honor given by the National Environmental Health Association for contributions to the field of environmental health. And uh, I was uh, just, I was stunned and uh, very, uh, very um, humbled by that award. So that was probably the the moment that I'll look back on and be uh, very proud of. But I would also say that if I look at the uh, my career in, as a whole, what I'm really most proud of overall is the contributions that I was able to make towards workforce development in the United States. And we uh, did, a, I think our branch in general uh, did a tremendous job uh, enhancing the, uh, the skills and capabilities and knowledge of the environmental health workforce. It wasn't just the internships, it was a lot of the training that we developed. In fact, when I go back today and look at the thousands and thousands of environmental health professionals, not only from the United States but around the world, that have viewed training that I have done or training that I have designed to enhance the, the knowledge and skills of the workforce, it really gives me a, a good feeling inside and uh, lets me know that my career was, was definitely worthwhile. I fell in love with ECU in high school. I made several trips up here. I knew this is where I wanted to come. It really tugged at my heartstrings. The people were so friendly. I had a chance to meet with faculty and a lot of students. And no one ever said anything negative. It, the, the students were friendly. Every time I'd come up here, I just I knew in my heart this is where I wanted to go to school. The interesting thing, and it's really uh, it's amazing how many students find environmental health by accident, and I was one of those too. One of my good friends, uh, his 
his uncle happened to be the environmental health director for the county that I grew up in, in Duplin County. So I went and talked to him and said, tell me a little bit about environmental health. And he explained it and he said, you really need to talk to Dr. Trenton Davis at East Carolina. So I came back and I scheduled an appointment to talk to Dr. Davis and uh, in about five minutes, Trenton Davis had me hooked on environmental health. He was uh, very enthusiastic and he told me about all the career opportunities that were available for environmental health graduates. So I decided to declare my major in environmental health and honestly I've never looked back. I, um, I think it was one of the wisest decisions I ever made. My oldest son is now a graduate of this program too so he also uh, believed in, in what was going on here at ECU in the environmental health program and he's done quite well too. But that's how it all started. It was kind of uh, finding it by accident. The best way was it gave me a head start. If you learn so much in the field. When you, when you go out to work in the field of environmental health, you're going to obtain a lot of knowledge quickly. But the one thing I will say about getting the degree in environmental health is it really lets you kind of leapfrog over others who do not major in environmental health that go into the environmental health workforce. The people that have an environmental health degree come into the field really, uh, as we say, they, they can hit the ground running and uh, it allows them to really bypass others who maybe have a biology or chemistry degree because they understand the science behind the practice of, of environmental health and public health. So it definitely helped me in that. And in fact, within weeks of when I started working in Durham County with the health department, I was having people that had 15 and 20 years of seniority over me were coming to me asking me technical questions. They knew the regulations that we were enforcing, but they didn't understand the science behind it. So it really helped me, especially in that area. Do it. <laughs> Do it. I can't say anything negative in any way. It, I, I made the decision to major in environmental health and I have never regretted it, never regretted going into environmental health as a, as a major, never regretted working in the field of environmental health. It's been a fantastic career that I've had. Two things that I would tell you about uh, environmental health are getting a degree in environmental health, the job placement rates are off the charts. Uh, the Association of Environmental Health Academic Programs did a study several years back and they found that within 90 days of graduation, about 95% of all environmental health graduates had a job. After six months, 99% of all environmental health graduates had a job. And I don't know of hardly any other major out there that can, have, that can claim that kind of success rate in placing their students. It's, it's phenomenal. And I'm not only talking about jobs in the public sector, but jobs in the private sector too. There's a lot of opportunities out there, not only with local and state health departments, with the federal government and such, but also with private industry. The other thing that I would mention is that we, I served six years on the Public Health Service Professional Advisory Committee, or the Environmental Health Officer Professional Advisory Committee, and we established the standards, the uh, appointment standards for environmental health officers in the U.S. Public Health Service. And we uh, established criteria that requires that to be an environmental health officer in the United States Public Health Service, you must have a degree from an accredited environmental health academic program. So we call that the gold ring. Once you have that degree, it opens tremendous doors, not only at the federal level and state level, uh, but really about anywhere. But it, it is required for a career like I've had to have an environmental health degree. Not only is it required for the U.S. Public Health Service, but other uniform services are requiring it too. I was able to partner with the Navy while I was working at CDC to establish the same standards for appointment as a Naval Environmental Health Officer as there are for the U.S. Public Health Service. And I believe the Army now is like that too. So it is, uh, it is, if you're looking at the uniform services, it is a requirement for most of those services, but it just opens doors for you in just about every uh, area of employment that you can have in environmental health, to have that environmental health degree to be able to hang that on the wall, it means the world.